do that by offering a, an array of products and services in the digital space with regards to online advertising, uh, we work with franchising and uh, search engine optimization, et cetera, et cetera. So after this is done, we will follow up and send an email that has a link to our open positions. We're always hiring, excuse me. Um, we're really excited to have this meetup today. This is something that we were doing in the past. Um, pretty regularly and took a little bit of a hiatus when we moved locations and so we're looking to host a lot more of these moving forward so thank you all for taking time out of your evening to come join us. Um, I think without further ado I will turn it over okay. to our Kafka representative. Cool. All right. Just give me a second. Just give I'll talk then. <laughs> <laughs> Hi I'm Chris. Um, I'm a systems engineer with Confluent. I'm Victor. I am a solutions architect with Confluent. So we're gonna be talking today about, obviously, uh, Ghostbusters. Yep, crossing streams. Crossing streams, who we are. Yeah, so it's my Twitter. You can uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm an interesting person. Yeah, Chris also, very interesting person. So as you can see from this reference, it's more like a enthusiast versus practitioner type of talk. So perfect way to put that. Chris is a practitioner, I'm a Enthusiast, I would say. So I'm going to be talking about code, um, and Chris is going to be talking about data and getting results and getting things done. Right, Chris? That's right. Yeah. So um, yeah, we came from the company uh, named Confluent. So do not be mistaken with Confluence, which is two different things. They, so they are a customer of ours, and we're a customer of theirs, but we're not the same company. <laughs> yeah. So um, where Kafka come? So basically, the founders of Apache Kafka project, they found this company uh, to bring value to enterprises and build a system that will be nerve system, system, build a platform that will be nerve system of uh, enterprise and provide the capabilities for uh, more uh, reactive or streaming of the data. Yeah, yeah, so uh, it was started about three years ago by Jay um, and Neha, um, and a third guy, June, who's actually down at the Javits Center, I couldn't get them out of our booth because it's Strata right now. But those three are the core. Um, oh, that's fancy! I've never seen yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're they're the the original founders of the project while at LinkedIn. It was developed to uh, decouple their log collection into Hadoop, made it actually a lot faster. It was a scalable system. Sure. Very important question: How many of you guys use Kafka? Yeah, that's actually really. So that's, that's the case, we Love see that it. all the time. Obviously we're at a Kafka meetup, so it's sort of a self-selecting group. <laughs> uh, but we're seeing it more and more everywhere. It's really great, it's been about three years. Um, we have done our C round recently with uh, Sequoia, so it's been really a neat, a neat growth uh, from the beginning there. And we also hired, so. Yeah, we are hiring, so check out our, sorry, not to <laughs> step on your toes about the hiring and, and all that. <laughs> So let, right. let's do basics. Yes. So I'll do basics a little bit. Do you yes. want to start with basics? Please do. Um, so the thing is, the, I guess because you guys already showed there are lots of hands. Yeah, you, you do the history. Yeah. To show a lot of hands about uh, that you guys uh, know Kafka, use Kafka, things like that. Uh, we, we think that we will do a little bit of uh, background of the things that uh, will be important in this particular topic and the certain features that Kafka has that relevant for this particular topic, specifically for stream processing using the Kafka Streams framework and the key SQL. So, um, the Kafka was uh, used in LinkedIn for quite some time uh, before it was open sourced and uh, donated to Apache Software Foundation and um, after a certain time the uh, Confluent uh, was founded and as you can see there's some coincidence or maybe it's a just uh, <laughs> um, Confluent bringing um, interesting and new features into the Kafka itself. So, because we, uh, as a company, we have uh, roughly 60% of people who are committing. It's actually, uh, we've had two new committers come on board in the last couple of months, so it's up to about 75 to 80%. Right, so we, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> we're pretty aggressive on this one. Yeah. <laughs> so, a couple of things that happened in the last, last couple of years uh, the Kafka project introduced the way how you can write off the shelves plugins that allow you to plug a plug plugins into the different uh, different systems that can ingest the data into Kafka and use Kafka to uh, push data somewhere else. So I'm talking about Connect API. We're not going to talk about Connect API today, but it's actually you know it's a very interesting yeah. topic that uh, we can potentially talk about. Can I ask anybody using Connect or anything like that? Right? Yeah, cool. Any uh, any particular like uh, sinks and sources? How about you guys use?
I really yeah. like when I hear about custom connectors because writing connectors is actually really a fun thing to do. It's actually really a cool framework to work inside of, and it makes it really simple. You want to um, get back to yeah. the spotlight because the camera will not oh, catch you. I'm kind of camera shy. Yeah, sorry. So we're gonna be cool. So that's connect, but that's a different meetup. Have us back. We'll talk about connect. So um, after that, it was ideas that okay. So we have a very very efficient system of uh, you know moving data pops up like consumers producers, but. Um, what is people are starting using different frameworks to process this data. They start using uh, Spark uh, streaming, Flink to do uh, stream processing, but what about actually the, the provided out of the box component? So uh, this is how the Streams API uh, emerged. And uh, with the uh, recent release before uh, Kafka 1.0, um, there was introduction of exactly one semantics of, of, uh, of processing things. And uh, it's again, it's another very interesting topic that we can talk about because it's also involved not all the external um, things that people can use in their applications. Producers and consumers are also support exactly one semantics. Um, Kafka Stream support um, exactly one semantics. Some of the com uh, connectors that we uh, certify as a as a company, uh, Confluent, they also support this. But um, also internally, there's many things what happen during uh, 0 0.10 and 0 0.11 because the, the message format changed with headers, we added uh, some of the um, unique identifiers and many other things. So it's also a very interesting topic um, to talk about. But today I'm going to be talk, talking about um, uh, case streams. So you already know this, that uh, Kafka is a product organized around the concept of uh, distributed log that basically um, drives a topics. Uh, you can have multiple producers, multiple consumers. Producer will write the data, consumers read the data. And the beauty of this uh, of the system is that consumers can read the data on their own speed, which creates natural back pressure. So the fast producer will not, uh, they're not overwhelming uh, slow consumers. And um, as you can see here, uh, w or you can imagine there's another, um, there's another uh, consumer that uh, can consume same data on the different speed and do something else with this data. And the difference here, difference here from the messaging system, for example, that when the message uh, is consumed from one system, it's not disappeared. So you can actually uh, return in time and read this message once again and do reprocessing. That will create a Kafka as a, um, makes Kafka as a, in some, in some companies they use this system. It's right. absolutely a data store, 100%. Yep. 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 Cool. Um, there's a couple things we want to touch on that's probably going to be reviewed for a lot of people but it is kind of core to Stream's architecture, and Stream's take advantage of a lot of these, these pieces, and we build on top of that. So bear with me if you know about this. If you don't know about it, it might be worthwhile. Um, so distributed systems, a lot of times for, for sharding data, you require a key. Key selection is really important. Terrible keys cause bad work sharing, uh, uneven data uh, distribution and, and all kinds of other problems. What is another uh, data distribution pattern that typically used with sharding? Yeah, no, or another system. I mean, anybody want to? Yeah. Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch. It's yeah. it's example of the system, but in general, I'm talking about pattern code replication. So we have a sharding or partitioning of the data that we use the the hashing algorithm to you know distribute data, and there's replication that basically have a copy of the things, and. Um, in uh, in the distributed systems, there's a pattern called uh, consistent hashing. Because consistent hashing uh, allows to leverage partitioning in a in a pure form and uh, uh, replication. So replication will be used. Um, many of you probably know this. <coughs> so the, this this is this picture demonstrates um, only like a leader partition, but there's yeah, also logical. backup. <laughs> Backup partitions that have a copy of the same uh, of the same data in case of uh, one of the brokers would go down. Right. So it's important to note that the key is used to guarantee order per partition. Um, we don't guarantee any order across partitions, so so key selection and key utilization is really important to make sure that's that's the key. Uh, and and it's going to get it's really important when we start talking about joints, right? Because obviously, if you're going to join two streams of data, you have to be the one machine that gets both pieces of data and puts them together. So joins are, are heavily reliant on this partitioning flat, partitioning system and the way this, this works. Um, another key feature of, of Kafka that's a little different from message buses is that consumers can not only read from multiple topics, but they can be grouped to uh, work together in parallel. Um, multiple consumer groups can actually read from the same sets of topics without interrupting each other. 
because Kafka doesn't get rid of the messages, right? So, so consumer group one up here can be reading topic A and B or these partitions and be at a different offset, even start over, go to the end, where while it's consumer group two is just sitting at the end just waiting for messages, right? So if we zoom into one of these consumer groups, um, the, the groups are there for not only parallelism, right, or, uh, but, but also durability. So your broker passes out partitions that it's responsible for, your consumers receive the, the, the messages, they start in an offset that's now trapped inside of Kafka instead of the zookeeper for anybody that's still on Kafka 8. <laughs> uh, so it's, we've Anyone? removed, anyone still using Kafka 8? Wow, that's awesome. Zero <laughs> Yeah, I guess nobody works for a bank here. Um, so, so during failures, the the the, dish, the, the partitions can be revoked. Um, consumers have heartbeats back to the broker. The broker will revoke that partition. Uh, healthy consumers have the opportunity to commit offsets. So that uh, notice that some partitions actually land on different nodes here, depending on your um, uh, your partitioning here. The, the offset commit before it revoke, gives over the partition then gets used by the new consumer to know where it starts over, right? And this is really important because Kafka Streams is built on top of these semantics, it's very simple. Um, so another core component of Kafka that Kafka Streams takes advantage of, uh, before I go on, any questions or comments about basics of consumer groups? Cool. Um, it's very good because it's a Topic. Yeah, right, right. Very so I'm assuming everybody knows what com compacted topics are? Yes? Okay. Uh, what's the use case uh, you guys can come up with for compact topic? Anyone using compacted topics? Uh, of this change capture. Change capture? Yeah. Anything else? Can you explain it? All right, yes, okay, yeah, we will talk about it. So imagine that this is a topic you're appending to the right, the back in time is to the left. Those on the uh, over here as the keys. Yeah, so letters on top are keys. Inside is value. It's very very simple. Um, a compacted topic. When you have your your, your cleanup policy set to compacted, uh, it means that simply we're just going to get rid of old values for a key. We're only going to keep the latest value for a key, right? And if we extrapolate that, what is that actually? Doesn't does it look familiar? It's just for a database the table. Yeah. Really. Just <laughs> spoiler. Right. So this this gets used in Kafka Streams as sort of representation of a table. So if Kafka Streams can essentially be the commit log made global and public, you can now take that commit log and materialize it as a table on demand. You can then take that table and rematerialize it as a commit log. Very simple, we'll get into that a little more. Yeah, which, uh, so in this case, this concept actually creates a very interesting use case where uh, Kafka can be used as a, as a database, basically, yeah. right? Because you have a, you can read the data by key, um, and uh, you get the value immediately now. So you already know this part of the picture because this is essential everything about um, brokers, producers, and consumers. But what uh, Kafka Streams brings into the table? So let's uh, let's take a look about some of the things what uh, Kafka Streams gives us. So first of all, Kafka Streams uh, is a, a library. How many of you guys are like Java developers here? Like Scala developers also counts. All right, not we'll closure though. Sorry, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so we get this promise, right? Runs everywhere. Um, so basically, the Kafka Streams allows you to uh, write the application that uh, will simply embed this library that allow you to process uh, streams. But what this actually means? A couple things that uh, Kafka Streams are borrowing from uh, Kafka itself and uh, use uh, Kafka as an internal storage. So first of all. Uh, it's a cluster. So a couple concepts, as Chris mentioned, uh, the consumer groups, um, this is a very powerful concept that was taken um, in the, as a base abstraction on top of, uh, in the Kafka stream was built on top of. That um, when the, you're running your uh, stream processing application, like the same application ID, they join the same consumer group, so in this case you're getting the parallelization of the task, you're getting the full tolerance, and uh, basically clustering with this shared state uh, already handled by Kafka cluster. Uh, can I ask, uh, stream processing running right now? Spark, Flink, other others. Beam, Storm, Storm. 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 So what's fun? So Samza, great. So so actually, our the head of the Kafka Streams project, Michael Knoll, was a PMC on the Storm project, which is maybe why the Storm commits have slowed down uh, in the last couple of years. But um, 
one thing that happens when you're working on a Spark cluster or shared stream processing or, or uh, environment is you're competing with other people for resources, right? So depending on who your operators, uh, which, which um, in, in the Hadoop world, there was like the fair scheduler, Spark has its own level of scheduling, you're, you, you may end up with noisy neighbors. What's really nice about the clustering done for you is that this Java library can be run in the exact way you'd run any Java app. Right? So you want to use Kubernetes, you want to just ship around WAR files, you can do whatever you want. Um, so negotiating for resources is a little more <coughs> simple and uh, straightforward, which is really, we find, is popular. Yeah, since, since already many people running a cluster of Kafka and they already figure out how to run it uh, safely, full tolerant, um, so this necessity of another cluster will come into, like, I don't know, do we really need this? Um, um, as I mentioned earlier, the, because the, the Kafka stream is built on top of the, the producer consumer and all these uh, components already include the exactly ones processing as a as a part of the base semantic, uh, you're getting this, uh, you're having this for free. So event time processing. So event at the time processing. So meaning that uh, I, I saw a couple of hands, uh, people using Spark, I assume it's a Spark streaming and the people familiar with micro-batching concept, right? So with a micro-batching concept, it's actually you running smaller piece of your job or like same job on the smaller uh, set of data. So it basically runs the same DAG over and over. With event time processing, you actually uh, run the processing based on event. And uh, some of the APIs that uh, I'm gonna show later um, will um, actually they they they, they uh, designed to, to run with event time processing uh, in in, in uh, since uh, we have a database expert and uh, Chris already uh, <laughs> talked uh, uh, a little bit about the databases so we have this uh, cool concept of um, embedded database that runs alongside with your uh, Kafka stream application so RocksDB. Um, and uh, RocksDB allows us uh, to have a local state persistent in case of failures. Plus, we do have uh, storage and the change log topic inside the Kafka. So, in this case, uh, RocksDB um, uh, provides local state and the global state stored inside a change log topic. It has, there are um, really interesting uh, metadata APIs that allow you to interrogate or query the, met the state of the cluster of the apps. Every running Kafka Streams app knows about every one else in its, in its group. Uh, and you can actually write some query layers that says, what's the state of this key, what's the state of that key, give me this, give me that. And in a distributed system, they'll actually route you to the right one, which is really cool. Um, and the fact that it's RocksDB allows us to materialize a lot of this in memory, but we're not limited to the per node memory. It actually spills off to disk. It's partitioned really well, so if you need to go grab a key off a disk, it's still it's slower than memory, but it actually makes it a little simpler. Um, the, the disk back, backing RocksDB is also really great for if you were to have a failed node get replaced but have the same disk, it'll just catch up based on the differences that came through Kafka at the time. So it can actually hold state on disk and then catch up with a small delta, which is nice. So there are some frameworks <coughs> that have um, like a stateless semantics of stream processing. Um, in this case, uh, we're going to talking about the stateful. So in the situations when you need to do average, you need to collect some sort of uh, intermediate result, you need to do like an operation like a sum, you will also need to collect. If you do s uh, simple operations like uh, you do some, you know, transformation of some values, so it's a stateful, uh, state state uh, less operation. So in this case, you would not, which is changing and continue, you know, pushing data to another stream. So yeah, it's it depending on the architecture of your, of your app, you're free to run Kafka Streams as a stateless service. And like on Marathon, it just pulls a slider all the way over or elastically scale it. Or um, stateful one will require, obviously, you know, shuffling of partitions as you scale out. And states get re you know, replayed and then you have to rebuild it. Yeah, in a couple operations, we're going to talk about this uh, when I will demonstrate the code. Um, they actually do this like a key reshuffle. Um, and, you know, the sole purpose of this presentation, right, across the streams, we're joining streams together to get some sort of different results. So we have a data that coming in from our ordering system and some data coming from our accounting system and we have we need to have some aggregated result that we will present as a, as a result on the web page, right? So, so in this case, um, Kafka, uh, Kafka streams um, very good candidates for um, for microservices uh, use cases, so when you're um, running in uh, 
small applications that are doing like one particular purpose and uh, everything will end up in Kafka by the end of the day. So one application can do one thing, another application can do another thing but based on the data from the previous application. Um, how many of you guys heard about the windowing term? All right, cool. So we, we, we have some people who use uh, different systems. You've done stream processing, you've got to be able yeah. to do it. Yeah. So essentially for people who in internet, um, we dealing with infinite stream of data and uh, we need to get the result somehow or at least we need to have some sort of like cheap point of this result right so we can constantly accumulate the result and wait this or we can uh, accumulate the result based on some fixed time or some session time when the uh, some user joined uh, to the system and uh, logged in into the system and he wants to get the aggregated result for his particular session while he's joining um, so this is possible to do with a powerful uh, joining API uh, sorry powerful uh, windowing API Plus, like joins and aggregation, uh, it's already um, built in and simple. Now, when we talk about clusters, when we talk about clusters and people thinking, okay, so today we were at the Strata, uh, Strata conference and uh, I, I have a conversation with one gentleman. He said, oh, you know what? We, we're not running like big data. data. <laughs> what does it mean? Ooh, our payloads is not that big, so we maybe don't need to have a cluster with other nodes. But it doesn't mean that uh, they didn't need to do like stream processing or like processing of this data in a, in a streaming fashion. And uh, so the Kafka streams is actually, um, because it does require a separate cluster, it can scale as you go because you increasing a uh, you know, throughput, some so latencies increases um, uh, in application. So you need to you know, scale out. So in this case, you can go with the start small and grow, grow bigger. Uh, another point on that scalability thing is um, a common way to develop Kafka Streams apps is on your laptop running an embedded Kafka cluster or just run a little Confluent instance there and you can you can actually grab some of the data and run on your laptop something that is very much exactly like what we'll run in production, right? Um, it's just that now there will be more partitions and potentially more actors in that space, but um, it's a really great model. It's, it's you don't, you know, you don't have to turn on a very large amount of systems in order to test your, your code and stuff like that, it's very cool. Another point here is um, when you run your um, Kafka Streams application, you exactly know where your code is running. So there's no like topology setup is leaking to your application processing code like you're doing, like you're writing like a Spark application and some of the code that runs on your, uh, on, uh, on the, some of the code runs on the worker, some code runs in, uh, What's the name of this? Uh, uh, for Spark? Yeah, the, 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 the not the master, the the one that's you know you submit your job uh, at the very beginning. No. Anyway, so but I haven't done a written Spark in yeah. about a year and a half, so it's been a while. <laughs> so the basically, um, this code is runs in the con in the context of your application. So it's there's no like a, a remote code execution so type type of thing, right? So there's no. Uh, moving bytecode around, moving results around, uh, which is uh, which is nice, and it doesn't require like sophisticated RPC mechanism to fetch right. and things like that. Right? Yeah. So um, now we're going from um, from the core concepts into some API concepts, right? Streams everywhere, tables everywhere. Um, we already talked a little bit about this. That you have a stream of some events that can eventually form a um, some database, uh, the database table, like constantly updating certain fields, running in search updates, and search updates, and all these entries. Now, we can also like turn this um, in a inside out, right? And uh, mutational operations we can capture from transactional log. Many of you know that databases are based also around transactional log concept. So you're writing some of the operations in the database, but internally they capture the transactional log that in case of your database uh, process will fail. So next time restoring your schema, uh, the process will, will, will read this transaction log and restore it. Um, and you can mix and match this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of approaches like tables, streams. Um, you can have a table if you have uh, some static data, some master data, and uh, you can uh, uh, enrich this data, um, enrich the data uh, stream of data and update. So many use cases that we're gonna uh, demonstrate today, they actually follow similar uh, similar concept. All right. So now let's uh, let's get into code. So 
I've seen like people show that they swear they're Java developers. How many of you guys use Java 8? Who's, who's downloaded Java 9? <laughs> Java 9, the released the cool stuff, released uh, this uh, last week, last week. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's about time. So basically Java 8 introduced a, uh, for general public, uh, introduced some of the functional concept. How many you know, people, skull words you see? <laughs> Finally. Um, or that closure guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, what happens that um, Java, Java, the Java Streams API introduced the way how the people think about data processing, not uh, not in the way how you know you're running loops, uh, you know, iterating over uh, elements, but you think about uh, data as a stream. So the same the same concept is um, around. Um, so in documentation, we call it DSL, but personally, I like idea of a Fluent API um, uh, because it's it's still it's still Java. It's just a different uh, way to how to express it, and um, it it looks like and feels like declarative approach, right? So because uh, you can read this code and understand why this what uh, each line is doing. Like we do um, getting streams, we do map value, which essentially apply this um, this function over here into this uh, for each value so we take the value um, and we uh, multiply it by two so some of the operations that we can do here are stateful so specifically we do a filtering with passing result we do uh, we change the key of the result we do run the reduce operation that will produce a sum of every old item and etc i wanted to point out um this tiny bit of code is actually starting to show you the two main building blocks of Kafka streams, the real basic primitives, which is the K stream, which is obviously a topic that's unbounded and it continues to run, and the K table, which is actually a compacted topic. Um, and what's happening is when you actually create a new K table, it's instantiating a new topic inside of Kafka, creating a compacted topic, and then holding the state of that of this sum of odd store, so if you notice we've named it, that's actually a, a represents a, a, um, a RocksDB instance that's actually instantiated, um, and then it's backed by the copy topic, materializing all the changes as they go into memory, and then that, because you have a data store with a name, there are other APIs that say, you know, get me the key for this in that store, do this, do that. Uh, so it's really simple, we build on top of these two primitives, Kafka streams, Kafka sorry, K streams, K tables, there's grouped tables, there's group streams, there's global tables, there's all these interesting things that get built on top of it. Can I inquire this K table to find out like all the keys and their sums? Yeah, so there's a, there's an example on our GitHub, uh, Confluent Inc slash examples is the, is the repo. Um, the one we've implemented is just a RESTful interface. You can actually query how, which, how many, what does this instance uh, have as far as stores? Uh, in this store, what are all the keys? For this key, what's the current value? So there's like a pattern for that. Um, but if you're, you're not limited to a RESTful interface, you can do RPC, you can do other things. So right? this is basically a true dynamic table. Yeah, right. So it's actually, it's, it's, it's running on RocksDB, um, which is pluggable, so if you wanna bring your own key value store into it, you can, it's up to you. But we've chosen this one, it's pretty well established at this point. So, so is it correct that this is always running kind of on the client, or on wherever the library no way, so there's always a round trip if you want to get it back into Kafka. The results of the summary. Right? Mm -hmm. There's no way to push the summary into the into the broker or somehow into the Kafka. Well, that's what's happening actually. It's writing back to a new, this topic. Right, right. But I mean, there's a, like if it's on a different machine. There's, there's a network round trip. Right, right, right. exactly. To, to pull the stream, compact it, and then push it back to a new stream. Uh, yeah. so well, so it's actually it's actually receiving it and holding it in memory, and then eventually, you know, it's going to show up in the broker, but that state store is held kind of asynchronously at setting it to Kafka and, and committing things. So there are some optimizations that the Kafka streams library are already doing this for you. For So some of the things that's reducing round trips, uh, there's possibility to batch this result. Right. So it's a cache locally and after that it flush it is a one big message. There are tunables for that, yeah. Yeah, so you can disable caching uh, if you want to have just, you know, you have a very fast network and you just want to get the result into the stream um, into the Kafka faster, but yes. So essentially, um, you, uh, your client application, your consumer and producer, your client application 
Kafka Streams application runs consumer producing turbine, which is involves uh, network communication. In mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's not like a stored procedure. Uh, which no. No. So this is uh, this kind of like a difference from from the things that other systems doing. Um, so I was uh, before I joined the company. I was with a company in Hazelcast. So it's in memory data grid. So the sole purpose of them providing storage plus providing computation on top of the storage in memory. So some of the patterns that they do um, is uh, to run computation next to your data. But again, this brings back a conversation that Chris uh, said, like how you're going to manage resources. Like if you have some application that runs, use it as a, as a cache, as a storage, will this computation will affect this? How this uh, separation of resources will work and things like that. So in this case, uh, Kafka already established as the you know bulletproof storage, and your application that you do you know some extremely. Uh, we're gonna have example of uh, you know when we join two streams with uh, the, how we call it like a full full join type of thing. Right, it will not break cluster. It will not break another application. So in this case, uh, this is uh, very useful. Yes, please. I just want to say that I think it's worth pointing out that even if this conversation was happening in a particular broker, that it still need to occasionally write out to some other ones of where those so, are. Right. So right. So that's why this, I think, makes more sense being separate from. I mean, keep in mind also that, that, that if you can batch it and send it back to the broker every so often and there's a failure, the Kafka brokers have all the data still, right? So if you come back from a failure, you can go back to an offset and play forward through this immutable stream that hasn't changed and re reclaim that state. So we can actually gain some performance by just batching them and sending them along kind of asynchronously, right? If that makes sense. Yeah. I'm not really clear on RocksDB gets flushed, like like I was, you're just using it as a cache, right? So mm -hmm. how do you how, how do you like evict or whatever you know as you go? Uh, so yeah, so so it's written to disk and also materialized in memory, and then as um, as things become, you know, windows close or okay. values are done, we go through and we tombstone it. So the there are values that get either updated, right? So it's it's a table. So there's a key and it just gets a new value. Or if that key is deleted, we replace it with null. And then it gets cleaned up later. Right, so, and then you can actually, there are tunables that say how many windows do we want to keep around as we as they close, and then it'll clean up those as well, right? And the idea here is you have a minority of topics that actually hold the narrative of the data, and you have all these derived topics that are kind of single purpose or, or, or special purpose. If you really need to rebuild those through time, you can actually start over at that, you know, long, held source set of topics and then rebuild going forward so, on demand. So, and again, I'm kind of lost because it's like you say it runs anywhere, but it still represents sort of a partition of a key, of a key space. That's exactly right. Yes. Okay. Yep. So every, if you have one instance of a Kafka Streams app, it's going to have all partitions and, and that one instance will have all the data. But as soon as you launch a second one, they will now each share this, the half the partitions. And, and they will and use uh, this consistent caching to, right. to, to share this data. So then uh, this, why, this why we brought up this concept of uh, uh, consumer groups. So basically one application, you know, one, one application which is the name, it's gonna be a name of this consumer group. And uh, multiple instances that run this application, they will join the same consistent, uh, consumer group. Yeah. Um, another point, like, okay, so, like tip of the day, like if you're thinking like flushing stuff that happens uh, even in Kafka, uh, and flushing to the disk is something like happen immediately, which is it is it is not because internally, right. it's a even even through the Java API there's no guarantees that the data will be actually flushed into the file system because it's responsibility of operation system and the way how they um, cached on the page cache and after that will be flushed to the disk. It's all responsibility of operation system. So even though in the API, if you use like it's uh, like it's uh, just a file API in Java, and you're thinking that okay, you're done. You said like file is going to close. Maybe, but just maybe, it's still in the page. Yeah, page. but yeah, I wanted to point that the fact that we write to memory and we have acknowledgments on the right, the right uh, producer, is based on when it shows up in another replica's memory, not when it's on the disk. Yeah, it's for that exact reason. Yeah, yeah. So 
uh, there are some guarantees that operation system gives. There are some guarantees that, or like semantics, I would say, not guarantees that frameworks like JVM uh, gives. And there's something that um, uh, some of the concept that we build around this assumption. So it's a uh, it's distributed systems and uh, and distributed systems and the multi-layer system. There's involved different layers. So. Um, it's it's even though like uh, RongsDB also can give us acknowledgement that okay it's a flush on the disk, um, it goes down to operation system and how the operation system will rise in there. But yeah, in general, um, it's not something that um, eighty percent of use cases that people dealing uh, they face the problem with that. So there are some ways how we recommend to optimize this and how to tune this, um, uh, and I think you can find some of the. Uh, pointers in our blog, the blog at confident.io. Now, this was nice, but, yes, please. One quick question. So yeah. if you're running like three nodes, yeah. then obviously your key space is partitioned on the three nodes. How do you query all the keys? Yeah. Do you um, separate queries so or? Uh, you, there's a couple of approaches. Um, uh, every member of a Kafka Streams app shares a metadata that knows the range of keys that that each one is currently uh, holding in, in memory or in RocksDB. And when you ask one, you can actually write a little pattern that says, okay, uh, either you, you know who else has it, so you can go get it and talk to them directly, right? So make a little bit of an RPC to another app, or just return a route that says, okay, they have it, now you go get it. There's like two ways of doing that. Um, and that's covered in our docs. There's like a developer guide. Yeah, it's called uh, interactive, interactive queries. Yeah. yeah, so there's something that, um, it was not that long ago released, right? So it's something that- Interactive uh, queries showed up. So there were internal up. private APIs that were used by our team for a little while. Um, and they showed up uh, last October, I think. Um, but you know, the main, the major pattern of a Kafka Streams app is that it reads from Kafka and it writes to Kafka. That interactive layer is a, is a useful layer if you have the, you know, maybe a command query type of interface that you want to instantiate amongst a lot of event processing, right? So. But what you're saying is, well, uh, if you write back to Kafka, there is a delay because of the caches. So, and by default, the cache is 30 seconds, which is really high. Yeah. And so people tend to want to query the, the, the store, the state store, so as to get the, the current value. It's materialized in the node that yeah, so if you do query that state, that node has it in memory, and it's going to batch it back to Kafka eventually, but while it's in there, it's yeah, responding to the value of the change. With, uh, they try to improve the interactive query, but it's the level of complexity to query the right node is really high. It is. Yeah, yeah. That's why we're saying it's not like a core feature. It was just a part of it was an API that was built to kind of give you some, some optional ways of doing that. but. One of the major ways, the, really the major ways that data moves into and out of streams processing is through Kafka topics for, in Kafka streams. Yeah. But how do you solve the problem of the delay? The problem of the, well, you can actually reduce how often to flush. You can reduce the. So you remove the cache. You can reduce your caching. Yes. You can yeah. do a lot of different things in that, yeah. The segment sizes can be reduced for that as well. There's a, a lower level API, so for people who are familiar with Storm. Yeah, um, so when, when I was talking about uh, event time processing, uh, each and every time when we're talking about key value, it's an actual individual event that came uh, from a Kafka topic. So if you're not satisfied with a um, variety of uh, out-of-the-box function to, uh, to process, you can write your own. So basically it's called a processor API. It's, uh, it gives you like full control, whatever you want to do. So instead of like doing like a filter and map, uh, you can write uh, your own processor, filter, and map, and do it in, in one shot, right? So in this case, it's going to be processing one and uh, <coughs> filtering and modification at the same time. If it uh, complies with predicate, you would do some modification, for example. Um, and yeah, this is something that, uh, uh, what kind of types of joins available uh, in, uh, in the Kafka streams, right? So we can do inner joins, so in this case, uh, uh, based on the keys, so keys need to present in the, in the both streams. Uh, we do a left join, uh, when the key, uh, we present the value of keys that present in the one stream and the subset of another stream. 
and we can do other join that basically value from one, values from twos, and joint values that um, uh, that come with um, regardless of the key. There's something uh, global key tables are really interesting for like almost like a hash join in Hive where you'd ship a small bit of data around to every joining node and then have it in memory. So glo global key tables will let you instantiate a set of data in memory as and, and be available for enrichment as fast. Um, like a lookup table or something like that. Um, there are some, uh, if you can see some of the, let's see, so the adder joins we don't do, where is it? There's one or two that are not always supported in each one. Yeah. Um, and and the, the developer guide has a whole table about like which thing is supported with which and which type of join. So not every type is, is joinable to every other type. All right, so let's talk, uh, let's do some uh, some coding, right? So how to write, how difficult to write this app. Um, so for this one, um, use uh, IntelliJ. Maybe you guys use IntelliJ. All right, cool. Uh, what's the other people using? Okay, clips. Clips? Or if you're Ewan, it's uh, oh, or Emacs. Like e e oh, sorry, different demo. No, the guy that wrote Connect actually writes everything in, in Emacs. It's kind of insane. Yeah, this is something that I'm never going to do. All right, so um, the first of all, I want to show you um, how this uh, the project looks like from perspective of how many of you guys are using like uh, build tools, like cool build tools, like Gradle? Pants. Which one? Pants build. What is that? Uh, it's a mono repo. Uh, came out of Twitter. I've seen it. For Java, Scala, Python. Oh wow! I don't know how many build tools I need. Oh, to know it that. looks like uh, Zoom just uh, just died. Uh -huh. You need to tell me once again how to join this uh, this stream. No? Uh, well, oh, maybe. So what's the uh, what's the? Yeah, you're paused. Ready for it? Yep. Four four seven. Uh, eight four seven. Four four seven. Four, four, seven. Four, four. <laughs> All right, four, four, seven. Three, nine, zero. Three, nine, zero. Eight, two, one. Eight, two, one. All right, so don't connect the audio. It's actually the first time it happened with uh, Zoom crashed. Um, it's, it's quite quite reliable system, I guess. It's really, really nice after, um, after WebEx or something like that. Anyway, so maybe anyone? I have a, I have a, all right, I have a joke about Maven there, yeah. I'm not using Maven because I'm not doing poor life decisions. <laughs> all right, now you have it. So, I don't know about Pants, but it's actually it's, uh, pretty cool to learn something. So it's not the uh, only, eh, eh, what's It's because uh, you went full screen. Ah, uh, all right, okay. Wait, where's your, where did Zoom go again? Yeah, do it at some time. It's died again. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay, okay, I'm not gonna go to, uh, to uh, please. Yeah, sure. Um, 447-390-821. Me too. Remember, just in case it will fail. All right, so, yeah, sorry about that. So, uh, Don't go full screen, I think, I think it seems to crash it. Yeah, I will, uh, I will tell you. Yeah, right. Yeah, now I'm uh, Who's talking about life, uh, poor life decisions, right? <coughs> this this person is talking about. Okay, let me try to exit from here. No, no. Nope. Hey, that's my connect IRC connector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The that's funny. Oh. Uh, I guess it died, died, died again. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. What the hell? What it's are weird. you writing besides IntelliJ and Zoom? Uh, okay, let me try to do. Um, yeah. Just yeah. Uh, don't put it in full screen and leave it in the same screen when you launch Zoom. So this is more experienced person talking, not the geeky guy like <laughs> like myself. Um, he knows the stuff. Oh, it's from previous time. All right. Okay. So hopefully. Uh, okay. So who's this guy? Like too many, uh, too many victors. Can you kick out one of them? You couldn't join. No, I. Uh, I just see screen. You know. Okay. Let me do it once again. This. Ignore. Ignore. Okay. You can see screen, right? All right. Okay. Cool. All right. So the way how it looks like, first of all, um, 
it really doesn't matter what kind of like builds you're using. As a matter of fact, um, I guess I'm getting wiser as well because I'm not participating in the like flame wars anymore, uh, or I'm just like a, have this consultant mindset and just doing my thing. Um, so basically, what you need to use for your application, and this this is something that um, you need to take um, into account. So just one dependency, uh, it brings uh, all uh, transitive dependencies. Um, also, the Kafka streams they su uh, support. Um, there are some serializers that uh, um, allow to you know, more easily work with Avro and integrate with a thing called uh, Schema Registry. Anyone uh, is using Schema Registry from Confluent? Cool. Excellent. Great. So, so basically, for those of you who don't know, the Scheme Registry is that it's another like open source project that uh, um, it's not part of the Kafka, but it's a, it's a, something that uh, we developed in Confluent and it's open source that allows you to have a, a repository of uh, schemas that different applications can share. Um, so when uh, when Kafka stores your data, it's actually Kafka doesn't care about what you store. It's just the bytes there. Um, and uh, at some sometimes you need to um, tell another system that how your data needs to be uh, represented. So uh, as a part of payload, there's a schema ID that comes through the Kafka and this uh, schema can be fetched from the schema registry and it can be materialized in the actual object in in, uh, in Java or any other the language that supports this. So basically in my application, what I have, I have uh, some raw data which represents uh, information about different movies. Um, and uh, you see there is uh, some, some title of the movie, uh, when it was, uh, sh uh, when it was um, released, um, some, of the, uh, some of the information, and I do have uh, some data about the ratings, which is, has a um, rating data um, and has an ID of a particular movie. So this is an ID of movie, uh, some of the rating data that people uh, placed, and some, some rating ID. Now, so idea is here is to show you how I can uh, first of all, um, bring this data into the Kafka and um, uh, do actually um, movie ratings, like get the movie and get the rating uh, out of it. So uh, in my stream application, it's a couple things uh, is omitted for now. Uh, we're going to talk about config a little bit, little bit later, but right now it's hidden. So everything starts with uh, case stream builder. So the case stream builder, this is um, uh, basically a uh, way how you plug in into this DSL Affluent API to build your um, your stream pipeline. So the first time we're starting uh, by creating a stream from uh, from raw rating. So um, in my in my application, I do have the way how I populated these movies. I basically use the console producer and uh, just push the data from um, the uh, from my file as is into the topic line by line, right? And the uh, same thing with rating. So so before I'm doing something with uh, with actual data, I'm um, I'm just reading this. So I'm creating a stream from um, from this uh, from this particular topic. Now I can do uh, a little bit uh, of. Um, the massaging of the data. For example, I want to change a little bit of values. So in this case, I'm passing like it's very nice and concise syntax that Java 8 brought us. Um, so the map values, I will do uh, the parsing of the rating, which is like a particular function that um, reads a uh, this pattern and uh, creates a rating object of it. And after that, um, I created another stream by transforming the data that uh, came from uh, from this. I'm taking a uh, movie ID and uh, taking the rating value and place it to another stream that will contain a uh, this particular guy. Now, from, uh, from perspective, uh, this is a stream of ratings, right? So after that, I'm taking this and uh, doing additional um, different operations. So interesting here, uh, is uh, I'm actually joining here two streams. One stream that contains uh, information about ratings and another stream that contains information about counts. And by joining this, I'm actually creating um, uh, the coverage rating in this one. And uh, this result will be stored in the key table because I actually don't care about intermediate results. Uh, I just want to store uh, rating and uh, of the movie 
is a um, ID uh, rating uh, fashion. Um, and also, like I, I can do some other transformations uh, here, um, and uh, and I can also write the final result into the topic so the other system can uh, can read this uh, on the other side, and uh, um, and finally. I uh, join the actual uh, movies stream with um, actual movie ratings, so overage rating of, of particular movie story in, in, the, in the key table. And uh, okay, so let's uh, let me try to, to run this. Um, hopefully. So um, so first of all, let me start clean. There is a very neat command uh, that does clean start for me. So with uh, the Confluent platform, uh, we also ship very neat tool that called Confluent uh, that allows to, as a, you know, if you're using Kafka for development, it allows you to um, uh, spin up uh, different components of the system for, for your local development. Um, and uh, it's very neat because you don't need to remember all commands, like you probably already, because you're using Kafka, you already know this, like being in Kafka, uh, and you need to pass the properties, and before that you need to start the keeper, and things like that. So what this actually is doing, this command uh, uh, knows dependency about components. If you're saying, okay, so start schema registry, and uh, schema registry depends on Kafka because the schema registry stores uh, uh, the schemas in, in Kafka, and um, the uh, Kafka depends on the keeper. So when we started this, like on the very beginning, just to give me a second, bear with me. So where, what uh, we're doing here, so when we're starting schema registry, we're starting zookeeper, we're starting Kafka, we're starting schema registry, all good. And after that, we ex I execute command to populate with some, some data. Just to point out, it's not yeah. a orchestration thing that's meant to be used for clusters of Kafka. It's more just local on your laptop. You want to spin up a Kafka cluster really quick, type confluent, start Kafka, and it starts one locally. Confluent, confluent destroy Kafka or stop Kafka will do both of those things, which is really yeah, so, and another very neat feature is that allow, uh, because we're generating uh, some of the like temp applications, I can read things like, I can do confluent um, logs Kafka. Oops, log, log, yeah. So in this case, it will just, I don't need to go around file system and looking for where is this uh, Kafka logs are, are, are or, for example, I need to do uh, zookeeper logs, same thing. It's, it's, it's very neat. And after that, when you're done with your development or you think that you, you broke something, uh, you can do all this destroy. Now, populated with data, all good. Uh, everything is created. Now, when I will run my application, <coughs> so um, before I run it, let me uh, review uh, some of the config with you. So <laughs> some of the things that uh, needs to be placed here is that um, application ID. So this application ID will be used to create a um, uh, consumer groups, uh, the bootstrap server that will indicate that, uh, you know, how I can connect. So also, in this case, I'm registering because in, in this example I'm using, actually I will uh, put this example on GitHub. Um, the, um, it uses some of the uh, Avro serializers, so I need to register them in the stream configuration. Uh, and uh, I just want to read it from the very beginning, so this is why I, I said uh, offset earliest. Another thing, so when we talk about um, uh, when we talk about the, uh, the caching um, in stream in stream config, there's a uh, there's a property a cache max byte. Uh, you can set this zero, so in this case it will you know dump it uh, immediately. All right, so uh, if I run it, uh, run. Okay. So it will start my, my application and I will show you something here. So output, uh, many of you have seen this, it's output of uh, from consumer producer. So as you can see, this is uh, the 
the current task that's running uh, or, or you know, the, my application is running. If I will run uh, another instance, this task would be distributed across multiple instances. And uh, while it will um, do the things, I can show you how this um, um, So how our topic look like? So there's something that I created, rope ratings, rope movies. Uh, some of the streams uh, created the topics, and there are some intermediate, um, intermediate streams. Oh, sorry, intermediate uh, topics uh, were created. So in this particular ID is taken from application ID, uh, and uh, we have this um, change log, which contains all operations that happened. Um, and uh, there's a repartition. So in operations, when we choose the key, key in operations like, uh, let me hide this. So it's actually, everything is pretty cool, like lots of, um, I like writing code and uh, everything is amazing. So for example, operations where, uh, where we, uh, we were dealing with ID, like a group by key, uh, these operations will involve uh, repartition. Uh, just that, yeah. It, not entirely yet. The declaration is like this, like a map when we involve the key. So it, New key. One. The if if some data is over here and it doesn't have a key, it's not keyed on the same key as the as the first one. Kafka streams can actually rekey, create the same number of partitions, and then republish the data with a new key, so that it's guaranteed that this this message with this key and that message with that key show up on the same host that then can do the join, which is key to this. As, uh, <laughs> as a result, uh, I do have here uh, movie and uh, overall rating over here. So this is uh, there's something that, um, <coughs> that that can be done very fairly fairly easy in a, in a this um, in a this approach. I did want to show like a, the word count because I love word count show. <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> um, yeah, but this is uh, this is something that's uh, really, 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 really cool, right? Okay. So as you can see, um, I start with a um, little bit of. Um, are you on Zoom already? Yeah, I'm on. The, I should be on Zoom. Yeah, um, the uh, <coughs> ending dependency, starting your favorite ID, uh, writing code, and boom, <laughs> like we. Uh, Feel very 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 powerful on this one. Now, um, yeah, you should say nice shooting text. Nice shoot. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, I'm not on the zoom. Um, you need this. Uh, four four. No. Seven. No no hold on hold on hold on hold on. I'm not on the internet. I can watch it. It's a, almost perfect. It's yes. perfectly yes. Right. It's a good loop. All right. So while he's doing, I'm uh, uh, telling you something, uh, something else about Kafka streams. Um, so or take questions. Uh, or take questions. Right. Yeah. So um, the cool thing about this, uh, when it, when you have uh, things that runs uh, locally, you can easily debug this. Um, you don't need to have a cluster and enable like remote debugging to to attach to this and uh, see what's going on. Plus, there's some needs. Um, um, Constructs that are available or potential will be available. Um, we just uh, spoke with Chris uh, earlier today, and he mentioned that some of the in the mailing list um, people were inspired by some of the features available in Java Util streams, like Peak, for example, that allows to um, get the get the feel how the current state of the value look like. You good? Give me the zoom, and then I can. <laughs> okay, <coughs> it's a it's a four four seven. Um, it's a three <coughs> zero, uh, three nine zero. Eight to one. All right. Yeah, cool. Now, so the uh, Chris will show us something cool because he is more uh, more pragmatic, and uh, I, you can probably need this. It's just not. No, I'm not going to use it. I just don't want to put this on top of your lap. Oh. <laughs> of course, I need to switch you as a presenter, right? Um, yeah. Can we do this? Um, so my demo isn't the same as Victor's. It's uh, it's not movies, so I hope it doesn't give me too many whiplash, too much whiplash. We have time. Uh, uh, I need yeah. to stop. I need to stop presenting. Yeah, you can right? Stop sharing, and you can stop sharing. Yeah, I'll share. Stop share. Okay. Yes. Well, actually, can you go back and just put that that one up there real quick? It just gives you a nice. No. It's done. Doesn't it's matter. Done. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I will. I will. I will get back with slides. I think I have it yeah. somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I will get back with slides. Don't worry. So, uh, can you, we see everything uh, here? Cool. Now using mic. Um, this is a very important time to use mic. Data flowing still. Excellent. So, my demo is a little different than Victor's. Um, it is reading edits from Wikipedia. Uh, I wrote a, a, a Kafka Connect connector, the Wikipedia IRC connector, that um, instanti instantiates a little bot that goes into IRC and listens to edits. So the Wikimedia Foundation pushes edits out to their channels. Um, I'm using this really neat new um, API that's part of Connect called Single Message Transforms. Um, it's a neat small bit of code that lets you do a small transform, like convert a date to a date time to a UTC, or mask a field, or in this case, I'm I'm running a, a pretty quick parse on a string and turning it into an actual record, and then sending it to Kafka. Um, and it looks like this. Uh, so get over here. So the data flowing through is actually a connect record using a JSON converter. Um, the connect records, when you when you push them out there, um, gives you a schema and a payload. I'm grabbing that and I'm uh, putting it into a topic called Wikipedia parsed. Um, to complete the pipeline, I'm throwing it into Elasticsearch over here and indexing it live so we can see that. Um, and you can see the data flowing through Control Center right here, so this is our Elasticsearch data moving through. But if we want to talk about KSQL, we can do this. Uh... So you do the demo, and after that we'll talk about KSQL. What's that? You're doing a demo, and after that we have a couple slides to talk about KSQL. Yeah, let's do some, let's actually do some KSQL to show you that. Is this good, can everybody see this, or is it, do I need to make it bigger? Yeah, we don't see A little bit more. Like, bigger, bigger, is that better? <laughs> So KSQL is a Kafka Streams app. It's written on top of Kafka Streams. Um, you can launch multiple instances of the server. Uh, it will, you can interact with it through RESTful calls. So there are, you post a, a query and it returns a result. Um, some queries are never ending, obviously, because there's a stream of data. So if you do a RESTful call to it, you have to do like a long poll and it just continues to send things back to you. Um, this KSQL CLI is, is, is literally a REST client with a command line interface wrapped around the, um, the line feed library, so you can actually do some really neat, like show tables, show topics, things like this. So the big, the big uh, font actually screws up our listing. You can uh, show streams. So I have a Wikipedia parse topic, which I showed you the JSON to. Um, and I'm actually grabbing that and, and identifying it as two, a key that's a, the, a key and a value that's two strings. Um, and I can show you the, this. So it's kind of hard to read, but there's there's a the create stream Wikipedia source. There's this nice data definition language that says, hey, this topic is JSON or this topic is Avro, and it looks like this. If it's Avro, you can provide an ABSC file. A very in the very near future, it will work with the Confluent Schema Registry, and you don't actually have to provide that. Um, it'll know exactly what the fields look like. In this case, um, I started with a, a schema string and a payload string. Right, so those are the two sections of the document that that's flying by in the front part of this. Uh, and then I can create an actual derived stream from that where I'm using a built-in function called extract JSON field. So this is part of KSQL. So you can say, go into and grab this field as a string or as an int or as a timestamp or whatever, um, cast it as that, and then it's, um, we create what's called a, a stream. So you register these, these streams in, in uh, KSQL. So you can say show register or no, show streams, here, remove register, sorry. So you can show these streams, they actually have names, they have topics they're assigned to, 
I can do a select uh, on this Wikipedia source, which is sort of boring because it's just the key, uh, uh, it's a key a timestamp and then the, the payload string and the, and the schema string. So that's not very useful, but if um, I kill this, I see some Russian thing. I do. I, I, I purposely grabbed Russian Wikipedia. Oh, for you. nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we can change that to just the Wikipedia. So now we have a, a, a source stream that's actually being parsed live into a Wikipedia stream. And if we select that, these are actually going to be columnar, right? So we can actually see what the data looks like and start act actually doing things on the data. Um, so there's this is columnar. It's kind of hard to see on a, on a narrow screen. Because it's Russian. And there's some Russian, yeah. There's a lot of ha lot happening in Russia right now. These people, this is live edits happening. So yeah, anything so that shows up, I don't know. It, it is not, it is not like lag or like slows down. It's actually data arriving, you know, arriving. As so people now edit, someone yeah, is just right, edit right. this stuff. Um, so if I describe this, I'll show you. It's easier to read. <coughs> is not usually this slow to respond. Can you add limits to your... Speech? Yeah, I can do limit five, limit two, limit whatever, yeah. It's probably a better idea to do that. Come on. So while we wait, mm -hmm. um, we can talk a little bit about um, what's the you know state of the KSQL. So basically, KSQL is, um, is a tool that are uh, available as a uh, developer preview right now. We uh, want to um, share this uh, with community and the people. So idea, the basic idea, like in this, why we uh, kind of have this, you know, this like a in the in the fashion that you know I'm kind of like a young guy and likes to write the code, but he is an experienced uh, developer. He knows like many things can be done more efficiently, and he knows the SQL because he's like from God forbid, forbidden. Like at times, right? Like <laughs> extremely old. Oh, yeah. Uh. Like he knows like a SQL ninety two, but I do have friends who was born in, who were born in ninety two. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, it's a cool, 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 uh, cool, cool question. <coughs> All right, uh, I'll do limits here. All right. So there's some questions that we're getting um, uh, on on the conferences about like is it like uh, the key uh, SQL is it like SQL compliant? No. So it's inspired by SQL and uh, it has also structure of querying these streams, but it's more like um, a Kafka streams query language rather than it's it's actually key SQL is it's like a uh, it's it's not something that you abbreviate or it's like particular abbreviation. Yeah, there's I mean SQL itself doesn't have any idea of a stream. It doesn't have any idea of Windows. There's there's all these things that were we didn't use CalCite for this. We just brought our own. So we're avoiding having to kind of do these special things. Um, and this this was just an easier way to quickly get this out there into people's hands and see how people want to use it. So we have this data. I'll do limits from now on. That'll be a really good idea. Um, if we want to do some things like aggregates or grouping, or we can do joins, I also have another um, table that I created, which is a really, really uh, simple um, map of languages to Wikipedia channels. Um, and I actually did this by doing create table, right? So if you look here, I have, I create a table, um, describe the fields, describe that it's format, um, told which topic it comes from, and I said which key it is, right? Or, or which field this is a key on. This is a compacted table I just created and I pushed a bunch of records in. I feel confident in doing a select star on this because it's, it's only like eight records. So we'll see if this, he kills me on here, but um, so what this is is simply uh, the channel and then the language that that channel represents. We can now use this to do lookups, group buys, counts on what's happening on Wikipedia, right? So we have um, you know there's the Russian Wikipedia. We have what's really funny. I love EU. E, uh, EU Wikipedia is is in Basque. EO is there's an Esperanto Wikipedia. There's really some fun stuff out there for that. Um, so if we do a uh, select, uh, let's say, language count join um, on the channel, right? So we have 
a left join on the the map. Actually, that's that looks good. And we're doing um, a window. So this is really interesting because it's an unbounded stream of data. We need to do counts on windows, right? And a window can be tumbling, it can be sliding, and there's a a special join window that that streams gets into. We can it's out of scope for this, but a tumbling window is is bounded windows that don't overlap. The sliding windows you actually have to define the size of the window and how often does it move. And now there's also this third kind of window that stream supports and also K stream supports is the session window, and it's defined by a period of inactivity. So if you say session window size 30 seconds, that means it will wait for 30 seconds of interactivity, and if after that there, it'll create a new window for any keys that show up. This is really useful for clickstream type stuff, sessionization of events that come through, really neat for that. But in this case, we just want to look at, you know, uh, count how many edits are happening in each language across Wikipedia over a 10 minute window, right? So what this is doing is actually going to show me the open window and, and, and the, the values as they happen, um, if it works. Let's see. There we go. Nope, nope, wrong one. Oh, no, that's good. So now we have, these are live edits. Every edit comes in and increments the, the number. And if you can imagine taking this and pushing it out to a table, um, it's changing with every record. And, and the moment you, you query that or you, you write out to a table, it'll consistently be writing these, these sums, which is pretty cool. Any questions about just that right there? So, so you're windowing on just the on wall clock time? It's the it's actually the clock time on the producer on the when the message was produced. Um, it's up to you to say whether that's important. Um, if the record itself has a field that's a timestamp that you have that you care about, uh, you can actually implement what's called a timestamp extractor. And when the message comes in, it will pull the timestamp out of the record and use that as its timestamp. Um, so that's there's ways of, of making sure because I'm sure like so one of our use cases is a lot of data comes from these cruise ships that are out at sea and then they come back to port and they want to push all the events that happen on the boat uh, to the cloud. Each of those events happened maybe hours, days ago when they were out at sea. All these events come through and if they, they flow through a, a stream processing app, they can be treated well like, like, like uh, late arriving data. So the record itself has a, a timestamp and it gets put in the bucket. And the late arriving data is managed with action? Um, the late arriving data is managed by how big a window you want if the window is still open, so let's say you care about joining so, so over. You have, a, you have a lateness parameter. Sorry? You have a lateness that, that's allowed, like, let's say. You know, yeah, you can, see, you can say how, how far back and how many windows you want to keep around. If those windows are still open and you're still doing joins on them or you're doing other things like that, then the, that it'll take later, later arriving data. If it doesn't, it won't show up in a window and it won't join. Essentially, um, the stream processing tool like Kafka Streams, um, in specifically Kafka Streams uh, that uh, KStream built on top of, uh, supports the concept of event time and processing time. So event time is the specific that you mentioned uh, that related to lateness or, of events. So um, th there are the right APIs that allow you to uh, take th those data into account. There was a question over there. I, I don't know oh, if we answered it. Thanks. Okay. Um, so I can take that. This is me exploring the data. I can run these little queries, do limits, do other things, and make sure. It looks good, and then I can actually take it and create a table. So if I want to create a table called language counts, I, uh, I do that. Um, too much, too much as is. Create table. Oh, that's too many as is. <laughs> um, so I can now do show tables. Um, and it actually, what it did is it created a Kafka topic um, that it's using to store these results, this, and, and it's writing them in there. And, and the difference is, if I do a select from here, this will actually show the every record has a timestamp, every record has a key, and, and then the two value or the, the, the language and then the value. Um, what you're seeing here is the compound key that's being used to do the join. So it's got the, the channel um, and the window. And this is an open window right now being at, being modified as these edits come through. So of course this can be used now live to, to respond to, you can like query the rest endpoint of this table now. You can say select star from on this table. Um, but you can take this table and write it somewhere, materialize it out to Elasticsearch. Um, you can take this table and um, potentially feed other microservices. So this SQL, uh, KSQL is really 
a great way to get people who have maybe some business knowledge but not some Java knowledge to be able to contribute and, and add to the exploration of the data. So essentially, I mean, that's it. Uh, there's some other queries. If anyone wants to come up and we can talk about it and try out different queries, you can, we can talk about that as well. But that's case SQL. It's at developer preview. It's on GitHub. It's totally open source right now. So, do, uh, stop sharing. I have a couple slides oh, to yeah. finish. Um, I'll keep this running in case yep. anybody wants to yep. play with it. <laughs> so, um, all this stuff, basically everything that we talk about today, um, like all the code, is uh, is shared on the GitHub and available there. So, there's some uh, some of the slides. Um, the uh, Confluent thing, uh, case SQL, this is a repository. Uh, have any of you guys using Docker? For you guys, we have a Dockerized uh, example, so you basically just need to run a couple this commands. Is running on a, on oh, a yeah, so instance, yeah. And uh, Chris Super actually cool. um, contributed to um, another demo, it's a Wikipedia demo, which is uh, now an official demo. Yeah, Whatever. that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is, uh, this is something that um, people can use. Uh, uh, like prior knowledge um, and uh, to do exploration. So why this developer preview and why we not recommend to use it in production yet? Because during these uh, comments, we create uh, multiple uh, topics um, and uh, like as a table, like a, a, um, compacted topics or general topics, but um, you can actually overwhelm your production server, but it's okay when you run it in uh, in uh, development, and after that, you can execute the same queries like once you already, pretty much as you do um, uh, development with SQL, right? You you have a your um, the, the the definition language uh, scripts that you just uh, uh, run in production. Um, yeah, we run this demo. We talk a little bit about. Um, SQL, yeah, so developer preview, uh, we value um, your um, thoughts about this, so it's, it's available on GitHub, we do have, I do have a card to our community, uh, we have a Slack, uh, yep, um, I have a bunch of cards, you can join, you can join our, uh, our Slack and ask questions about this, and you know, if you're not there, why you're not there yet, right, and uh, just um, send us a question, Questions, Chris Mata, this gentleman, uh, Victor Gamma, also GM USSA, and the Confluent uh, follow us uh, for announcements. Uh, thanks for your time, guys. I hope it was uh, helpful. And uh, uh, we still, uh, yeah, I totally forgot about t-shirts. We start. We need to throw them for the good questions. Yeah. So, <laughs> you guys yeah. had who had the, there was a bunch of good questions in the middle, right? In fact, engagement here. Yeah. Trade it for a size that you want. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks for your time. Does the component There's probably CLI, enough seasons for everybody, don't worry Does that run Docker? Like, where does Kafka, like, host it through the Confluent So, CLI? when you run this Confluent CLI, good question. Um, so, I'll show you. So, basically, um, oops. Uh, also, we made marketing really sent us with that. Cock so <laughs> basically the confluent <laughs> what, what, what is that spinner yeah that, that's awesome yeah that those are are, are pretty cool <laughs> here I have a bunch so the confluent CLI it's yeah. it's a uh, it's a part of uh, uh, the confluent platform distribution mm -hmm. so um, essentially it's not it's not docker oh, it's not it's not bringing stuff and that things that like that uh, it runs on your local installation it uses uh, base um, um, the base installation binaries that create some of the um, temporary data sure. in your file system that you can find with uh, log command and things like that. Most of them so yeah. Largest. yeah, this is um, yeah, this is something that uh, can can be used. Docker, uh, we we have official Docker images, uh, CP Confluent platform. Uh, um, Confluent Inc is the key, not Confluent. Confluent is the old one. It's yeah, yeah, that's this is confusing. Naming is hard. Um, yeah, naming if it. you go to um, up um, docker.com, uh, all right, that's nice. Yeah, it is actually. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know. <coughs> yep, and um, you can find something. 
a bunch of golf things, want to drag but uh, <laughs> the the one image that you want to use is uh, this SCP uh, uh, Kafka uh, gun. Now, what? Where am I? Uh, there yeah, should be Kafka something, right? Um, yeah, so zoom. The zoom is over where on my screen right now. Um, yeah, CP Kafka. I remember something with uh, CP. So, also open source platform. Um, for our demos, we're also trying to use uh, Docker where it's possible, but uh, today I just uh, want to showcase the um, uh, Confluence CLI. Um, if you have any questions, uh, we'll hang out a couple minutes here, um, but uh, find us online um, in Slack. This is a place to be. Also, like we do have a like in the Slack, we have a meetup uh, um, meetup room where you can uh, learn about the meetups a around the world. So we we grow in groups um, and we are supporting groups. So thank you for your time. Thanks for organizers for food and uh, beverages. And um, see you next time. Alright, so now I'm going out of Zoom. We just let it crash. Oh, <laughs> yay! Okay, let's go try it again. View, presentation mode. See? It's still working. I don't know, like, what you're talking about. That's so funny. Yeah, so what happens with me, like, last time when I was in Philly, um, there was no, uh, for some reasons, uh, the laptop don't want to yeah, connect to their, uh, to, um, their projector. So I use I use Zoom. Like early 2018, but Nate has like it's really hammering for us to get it up for the new year. Um, and we have some eight or ten, twelve. Um,